Just as I was about to lose all hope for our teenagers and our future generations, I mean, I've watched a lot of dumb stuff on this channel, it's easy to feel like all hope is lost for our future, but they go and do something so thoughtful, so poignant, and totally redeem themselves. I'm of course talking about the new TikTok POV Holocaust challenge. Let's take a quick peek at one and try and absorb the powerful message here. Is that, is it? Oh, okay. Huh. Yeah, I mean, whew. Bone chilling stuff. I mean, just, I can feel like chills, you know, just, oh God. When you feel something, you hear, you see something and it just feel, you can feel it, it's powerful, you know? I just, I don't know how to explain it, but wow. In case you're unaware of what POV TikToks are, they've become very popular the last several months to a year. Unfortunately, because they're almost all dog shit, for example. Any and all crime, including murder, so as the viewer, you're supposed to get transported into this particular POV where they describe in the description what you're witnessing. And normally, like I said, it's terrible, but finally they got it right. As in this case, this is part two. POV, the girl who died in the hollow tells us how it happened. Hashtag FYP, POV, viral for you, sound effects, makeup, special effects, heaven, death. Let's take a peek at this one as well. I love stew. Oh no. What the hell? What? what? That's terrible. What? No! Not Auschwitz. <sighs> Don't cry on camera, Leon. Well, if you weren't woke before. <laughs> You sure are now. And of course, I'm smothered under 13 layers of sarcasm, but here's a little clip of how I really feel. What the fuck are you thinking, God? If this is not some of the most tone-deaf, clout-chasing bullshit disguised as spreading awareness that you've ever seen, I don't know what to tell you. I imagine this whole thing started because little Susie Smith from the suburbs sat down one day and was like, man, you know what, I've lived a pretty privileged life and haven't really faced a real struggle a single day in my life. Why don't I put on a bunch of makeup that looks like I've been bruised and burned and maybe a tattered flannel and do some POV bullshit about being a holocaust survivor? That's activism, right? That's spreading awareness, right? That'll get me likes and follows, right? I mean, hey, it worked. These girls are getting written about on CNN, The Insider. They're going viral on TikTok. I mean, they're all over the internet. <laughs> Checkmate, snowflakes. Now, naturally, of course, one person does something on TikTok and it probably like gained some attention because it got a lot of engagement because people were like, what the fuck is this? Comments, likes, or whatever. So then other teenagers see that it works and they're like, oh, Susie, Susie Suburbs did a fucking POV holocaust <laughs> TikTok. That means I should do the same thing because then I can also get likes and follows. And then the next teenager does it and the next thing and it becomes a trend. Somehow, naturally, this didn't go over well with most of humanity that aren't holy smokes i almost i almost said the r word i have to apologize there listen i'm in my 30s growing up it was normal it was normal to say but in the spirit of 2020 and feelings and shit i'm not going to say it but you understand what i'm you understand the point i'm trying to make here Spend the rest of my days here Cause you make me feel weep, like weep, 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 I've been locked weep, out of weep, heaven weep, 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 weep. What? I don't like, what was even the point of that? I don't, was there even a caption to what that was supposed to be? Like if you're gonna POV me at least give me a little bit of a caption. Listen, I can't speak for anybody else, specifically the Jewish community in this case. I'm 40% Scottish, 60% tomato. I typically don't get offended by most things on the internet. I have the self-awareness to understand why things might be offensive. In this case, obviously, people that have families that have survived these horrific events from however many years ago, uh, that might be a sensitive subject. What I am offended by is the magnificent level of ignorance it takes for these kids to post some dumb shit like this and then try to pass it off as spreading awareness. In this quote from a Wired article where they asked a bunch of teenage influencers why they're pretending to be Holocaust victims, Michaela, 15, from Florida, naturally, says she made her video to spread awareness of the Holocaust. 
Act and to share her ancestor's story with the genocide. I'm sorry, spreading awareness about the Holocaust. Hol <laughs> yeah, you know, because the Holocaust really flew under the radar. You know, we got to make sure everyone's heard about it. Hey, Barry! Barry! Yeah, have you have you heard about... You ha Dude, come on in here. I got to tell you about this crazy shit that happened like... 9, 80, 70, I don't even know, but let's make a TikTok about it. You can take your spreading awareness and get right the fuck out of here, okay? This is the problem with a lot of young kids these days. They're hungry for clout. They're hungry for likes. They're hungry for attention. This is the new social currency these days, these social media apps. And so they post some dumb shit like this and disguise it as spreading awareness. And the biggest problem is they don't even, I don't even think they know they're doing this it. This hashtag activism, this spreading awareness is 90%, and don't quote me here, cause I'm just, I'm just spitballing, is 90% people just looking for attention. You're gonna look me in the eyes and tell me that if social media didn't exist, you'd go to your neighbor's house and knock on their door, hand them a little pamphlet like a Jehovah's Witness and make sure that they're aware of what the Holocaust is you'd go door to door in your neighborhood spreading awareness for all these tragedies you're so passionate about bullshit no you would and i'm not sitting here trying to disparage people that are passionate about important topics are passionate about getting the word out about things that are important but let's not pretend that a massive percentage of activism isn't just clout chasing disguised as said activism and spreading awareness. We can't pretend like that doesn't exist. And that's how trends like this happen, all right? We don't need to spread awareness about arguably the most famous genocide of the last several hundred years. POV, you're a Jewish little girl in the Holocaust and you're being inspected by the Nazis. FYP for you page that those are hashtags you use if you want to go viral I just can't even be fucked to understand what's going through kids head anymore a kids kids head kids head I cannot be fucked to understand what's going through these kids head now social media has completely scuffed it for everyone our brains are being rewired to be completely dumb I almost did it again yeah. And in case you were wondering, yes, the Auschwitz Museum even tweeted about this TikTok trend on Twitter. They said the victims trend on TikTok can be hurtful and offensive. Some videos are dangerously close or already beyond the border of trivialization of history. But we should discuss this not to shame and attack young people whose motivations seem very diverse. It's an educational challenge. That is a very nice way of putting it. That's why I'm here. Uh, to attack and shame the young people for doing it. <laughs> that, that, that's the that's the yin and the yang of the internet. I'm the yang, Auschwitz Museum is the yang, apparently. So they made a very long and museum-like statement about the whole thing where they were, you know, educating and trying to talk very respectfully, a lot of verbiage going on here, and they tiptoed around the teenagers and tried to make sure nobody was offended. One thing I like here is they say, uh, some of these TikToks were not created to commemorate anyone, but to become part of an online trend. This is very painful. And that kind of sums it up. I imagine some of these kids really thought they were doing something positive, uh, but a majority of them probably were just doing it to hop in on the trend and try to cash in on the likes. And then just when you think teenagers couldn't set the bar any higher, the trend starts growing limbs and all of a sudden we have 9-11 POV TikTok and naturally the third edition uh, Columbine POV TikTok. What's your name? I'm Rachel. May I ask how you died? The co- Okay. Well, 20 years ago, two boys opened fire. Yep. Yeah. Oh my god, that's horrible. I'm so sorry. It's okay. That's it? That was- That was it. That was the TikTok. That was- <laughs> I was like- <laughs> I'm not, I'm not laughing, I'm not laughing at the contents of the TikTok, I'm just laughing at like, God, the idiocy, the ignorance, it's insane, let's watch the ending one more time, hold on. Oh my God, that's horrible, I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> that's the TikTok, that's it, that's the whole thing. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? POV, the second plane just hit the towers and the only accessible staircase is being blocked by John Mayer, but you don't care because he's playing his all-time smash hit, Your Body is a Wonderland on acoustic guitar. Your body is a wonderland, I'll use my hand. I'm just saying, I would spend money to spend just a couple hours with one of these popular TikTok kids to see what's going on in that dome. 
<clears throat> Pull me out the train wreck. Not Boy. ready to die. Run, pull me out. I'm not ready to die. I'm getting copyright. Family yeah. saying goodbye. Gunshots. Pull me, like, <laughs> like I don't. I don't think she means well, right? She has to mean well by this. Like she's trying to evoke some sort of emotion to you to make you feel the weight of what it must have been like to experience that. But the problem is, like you haven't experienced that. You have no idea what that's like, and you're doing it on TikTok in order to try and get engagement and likes and, and follow. So, uh, so you get the picture. A lot of these TikToks get a little bit repetitive. It's all these kids kind of trying to do the same thing with their own flair to it. Um, the, out, the outcry was pretty remarkable. Like I said, a lot of the mainstream media news outlets picked this up and uh, a lot of these kids deleted those TikToks after the blowback, naturally. I don't really know what else to say about it. I'm curious how you feel about it. I think it's pretty indicative to the culture around social media and in the conflation of activism and spreading awareness and clout and likes and engagement there is an addiction and when you look at these hot button social issues and this hashtag activism and this spreading awareness like i said it's easy to get those things conflated like that need for the engagement i think that's where the waters get pretty muddy and again i'm not i'm not disparaging people trying to use social media for good social media has been used for some incredible things don't get me wrong, but there is there is a level of uh, lack of self-awareness with people where they think what they're doing is good, but it's really just uh, a little bit of a clout chase disguised as this thing that they think is activism or they're passing off as uh, a spreading awareness because they know that it's going to get a response more than just posting a normal one-off selfie or some dumb shit would. It's 1941 and Germans are experimenting on the prisoners. They send them to 2020 to care if the Germans are still in power. What? Yeah, so... <laughs> I mean, there's like a million comments and articles I could read until we're blue in the balls, but I think content like this kind of speaks for itself. There's not much else to say about it. Just wanted to get that off my chest. Hopefully we can use this to have a collective moment of self-awareness. So before you hit that post button next time, think to yourself, am I really doing this because I give a shit about the thing I'm posting about? Or am I really doing it because I know it's going to get me some likes and engagement and God, that's going to feel so fucking good for a couple of minutes until it goes away and I feel empty and then I have to come up with the next bullshit thing to post to get that rush again. Because I promise you, it's most likely the latter more often than not. And the more we can be aware of that, probably the better off we'll all be. Until the next video, I appreciate you watching. As always, if you subscribed, if you haven't yet, that would mean the absolute world to me. And then if you could just head down to your local dairy farm and grab the first cow you see and headbutt them right in the face and then suck a half a gallon of milk right out of the teat, stand up, tip that bitch over, drop your pants and hip thrust that motherfucking like button for me, I would greatly appreciate it. We'll see y'all in the next one. Peace. Yeah.